we've had in the presence of the Lord. I mean, it's a week to be remembered. Glory be to God. You know, we've got into these meetings and other meetings and really a month of maximum yield. Come on, I, come at on. At the end of a program, that phrase came up. I believe really March is going to be off the charts as we hurdle into this next month. Come on. I think we're going to see so much harvest of things people have been believing God for all over the world. They need to lock in today as the door for the more. Okay, I tell you, we, we, you know, the whole week, wow. it's been a flow, and tonight is no different. Tonight's going to be an amazing Absolutely. night as well. So welcome to you wherever you are. Great to have you with us. Yeah. Join us right now. Stay connected. Let us know. Post in the comment section. 
Just let us know where you're watching from, Jen. It's all happening right here on this Wednesday on oh, Faith Today. It really is, and we are, again, so excited to be able to have this platform. In fact, we are overwhelmingly grateful because we have the truth of God's Word. We have the Spirit of God that just literally reveals His will to us on these programs. And, and I just want to also just thank you, Pastor Tracy. You have been such a blessing to us, such a blessing to the body of Christ. You cannot sit under the ministry that is coming across here and not be completely revolutionized in the Word. So I do believe that time is short. I believe that God is accelerating the time and that we are going to walk in the fulfillment of everything Jesus paid for us to have. So that's what I would love for you to start having expectancy for, even today, even Hallelujah. now, as you open your heart to the Word, expect the fullness of what God has for you to begin to just flow out of you like an unstoppable force in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Come on, type in the comment Amen. section, tonight is my night of fullness. All right, something's going to happen tonight. Oh, I, I believe it. Well, I, I not only believe it, I just expect it. Amen. Yeah, you talked yeah. about it's going to be an unstoppable yes. river of force of the fullness. <laughs> Glory to God. I expect Woo. it. And uh, I just do want to say thank you both as well. Uh, the honor is all mine, and the world is our pulpit. Praise Come on. And we Come just want to thank on. you for receiving Faith TV. Yes. Yes. In yes. fact, USA, London, UK, and all over the evening in the, in the continent of Africa, my, 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 what an idea that right here, right now, all over these continents, people are receiving life from the Word of God. And I really want to encourage them. They, they should log on to Faith Now, YouTube, wherever they are. They need, with all that's been happening, the miracles that have been happening, the testimonies that have been happening, they need to log on. They need to type in how they've been impacted by the Word. They need to talk about the miracles they got the last two days. They need to talk about the maximum yield, what they're believing God for, because we are one big, great faith family, and we're going to see this thing through, right? Woo, it's going to be a good night. And Steph, what are you believing God for tonight? Very expectant today. You know, we're really growing as a network and as a family here. We're going, all going in the same direction at rapid speed. And uh, the Lord just told me, you know, I'm preparing my church for my arrival. And it's not about like what you were saying yesterday, Jenny, and not, it's not about uh, storing up cans of food and hiding out in a bunker, but preparation for his arrival is, is understanding who we are in Christ, understanding what he paid for and the fullness that we can live in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Amen. Amen. Brooklyn, are you ready? Yes, and I just believe the Lord's been pulling blinders off of people this week. He's been delivering them and setting them free. And just as Pastor Tracy just shared, if you have a testimony, share it with us. I know that it will encourage others, but also it's going to refuel and encourage us. We love to hear what God is doing in your lives. And I just, yeah, there's been a shift in people's minds and people's lives, like, like he prophesied yesterday, that will change your life forever. Never be Amen. the same. Amen. Ah, yeah. Amen. Well, I tell you, we're going to have a great time come on put that name in the comment section let us know where you're watching from many of you have jumped on already tonight is my night of the fullness of the glory of god you tuned into the right place it's going to be a glorious time come on let's praise the lord together and let's enjoy what god's got again on this powerful wednesday night right here on faith tv come on guys well, there's joy in the house. There's joy where we are and joy where you're at, wherever you are, at home, in your car. Just receive that joy that comes from the presence of the Lord. The fullness of your joy. We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. Because He opened the prison doors. He brought in the raging sea. My God, we hold the victory. Oh, there's joy. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord. 
tell you, there is an excitement for tonight and for what God's about to do right here. Amen. And uh, I, I'm believing for a move of His presence. Yeah. There's going to be a powerful word coming across. We've got a lot to talk about, some exciting things that are happening. And, uh, and then we've got an exciting surprise for you at about 10 past 7, uh, uh, cat time. All right, Central African time at about 10 past 7 tonight. We're going to be doing a crossover into the um, FLC, which is the Fivefold Leadership Conference. Wow. And uh, Pastor Nikki told me that there are 900 Whoa. in attendance. Praise All right, God. there are 900 Woo. ministers <laughs> in attendance. And uh, you wow. and me are going to be crossing in, wow. Pastor really? Tracy. And uh, so we're going to take Hallelujah. you on the journey with us because it happens to fall over our live broadcast time. So we're going to take a couple of moments then to minister and just share with them, encourage them and get them ready to receive their evening offering. And then we'll use it as an opportunity to receive ours as well later on in the program. So I'm just giving you all a heads up because it's Wednesday night with a change a little bit tonight. And uh, you're going to come with us and we're going to have a great time in the presence of the Lord all around the world tonight. Now, we are counting the days down, all right? And I'm not sure how many days until Faith Revival X, yes. all right? But uh, the guys will give me that cue. They're very good. They always put it on the screen for me. But, um, <laughs> you, 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 you know, we will, we will be having that uh, conversation after today. But um, it, it is just a great opportunity for us because... We, we are coming up to just over 100 days or so that we are going to be getting 114 days, they're telling me, to Revival X. Wow. And uh, Revival 10. It's going to be a powerful time, this next revival. I, I'm excited for it. We're going to be ministering to a number of leaders and ministers over that time. And the Lord's laid a, a strong word on your heart that I know we spoke about it yesterday. And uh, something's going to be happening at that uh, Revival 10. Oh, it's going to be <clears throat> stepping over into the things we've been experiencing here, but it will be magnified, yeah. manifold. I, I, uh, when you mentioned that to me and said, would you do that there? And you were led by the Spirit of God to ask concerning some of these things we've been talking about, about maximum yield and so forth. Uh, I said, absolutely, glory to God. So I just want everybody that's watching, you need to get in those meetings. We're going to be talking about coming. I am sure that when I come to you, I will come to you in the fullness oh, of the blessing of the gospel of God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Lord told me that the fullness of the blessing, absolute restoration and manifestation, yeah. is the fullness of the blessing and operation. Praise right, God. right. Praise so God. glory be to God. We're going to see astonishing miracles of restoration. Accelerations, right. right, and people are going to have sudden breakthroughs. Yeah, I'm talking about hundredfold, which is maximum yield, not just a hundred times, but the fullness of what heaven can do as it comes with its glory upon their life, their family, their body, their finances. And we're going to be talking about how to harvest that. That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as you were saying that, that just, it was like this excitement just rose up on the inside of you because I've heard some of because your Because you, you've had a sneak preview. Oh man, you're going to learn right. how to harvest the fullness. <laughs> Praise God. That's the whole now, purpose behind it. Now don't tell them too much because we're going to keep it. I'm not going to tell them too much. We're going to keep it for Revival I've 10. Got, I, I know, we're keeping it from Revival 10, but I'm going to say one thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was one of the points we've made on harvesting this fullness, and you and I talked about it off air, so we're going to say it on air right here. I want to read these verses. It says, yeah. talk about the wheat and the tares. Yeah. Forget the tares. Pay them no mind. Your wheat's growing. Glory to God. <laughs> but he said, let both grow together until the harvest, for in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather together. And there's a separation of the tares and the wheat. And then it says this, as he explained the parable, he said, as therefore the tares are gathered and burnt in the fire, so shall it be the end of the world. And this is based on what he says by verse 39, the enemy that sowed the tares is the devil, the harvest is the end of the world. But listen, the reapers are the angels. Praise God. <laughs> Come on. Harvesting angels are going to be in the dome at Revival 10. Oh, I tell you. Harvesting angels. Come on. Come on. To help us reap the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. 
We can't talk about the year of more and more and more and not experience. Oh, Praise absolutely. God. We will. I, t I, I tell you, something is going to happen. Nancy Dufresne is going to be with us as uh, one of the speakers. Now, what, what we're doing over the next couple of weeks is we're creating an advert for each one of the speakers uh, just to get that out to you. But uh, this week, Nancy Dufresne is our advert that we're promoting. And then each week, we'll be promoting a different speaker uh, for that time. You, you want a book. Now, remember, it's 10 days this time around. We are starting Friday morning, the 21st of June, and we are running until Sunday 30th? the 30th, 30th of June. All right, we are running 10 days. All right, 10 days, 10 hours a day, and Nancy Dufresne is one of our powerful speakers. Take a look. You talk about a sound from heaven. When he came into Earth's atmosphere, it changed everything. The power of God was contained in one location, but when Jesus came, the power of God started walking where men walked. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost came to reside on the Earth. We have to be skillful with faith so that we can become skillful with power. The Earth is wired with power divine power all right come on 10 days 100 hours wow that the lord spoke to us about we are going to broadcast 100 hours in that week or in those 10 days from the faith dome and uh, it's going to be a powerful time so you know you you and i have been to these camp meetings you you and i have been to uh, these type of meetings like we're going to be having when we were with Brother Kenneth Copeland and, and those victory campaigns and, and, and all of those mega meetings and the ministers meetings. And uh, we decided we're going to be doing morning, afternoon and evening over these 10 days. All right. So um, we, we're going to put on our revival shoes. What happens to a person yeah. in, in the natural now? Yeah. If they drink alcohol and drink alcohol and drink alcohol and morning, just don't stop drinking. Morning, noon, and night, yeah. What happens if they drink morning, noon, and, noon, and night and they get saturated? Come on. What come happens on. to a person? Something takes over them and they're not, they're not in their right mind. They, they don't even have control of their body. They're, they're, well, that is the, the death side of it. Right. That is the curse side of it. And the scripture says, do not be filled with wine wherein is excess. Come on. But be being filled Come with on. the Spirit. Come on. Now listen to this statement. Ephesians 5, redeeming the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. For the days are evil. I'm expecting some absolute miracles that are going to restore the years the canker worm, the palmist, and the, lo the locust, and the palmer worm have eaten. In other words, he's going to put you back walking in the fullness of what you could have had, even though it may be years of devastation and it looks impossible. In this meeting, there's going to be creative miracles that are going to redeem the time. Praise God. Right in the right, middle of this right. evil Come day. On. And all because, all because we're going to keep drinking. And drinking. And drinking. <laughs> and drinking. Morning, noon, mo morning, afternoon, and night. Come Glory on. to God. Come on. Woo, the fullness. And, 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 you know, people say we're crazy. We are. All right, we're crazy in love with him. Well, Brother Andre, let me just say this. Yeah. People who say, you're a nut. And I say, well, I may be a nut, but I'm screwed onto the right bolt. <laughs> <laughs> so you can call me a nut all you want, but I am securely attached Thank to something God. that is immovable. Come on. I, I, I mean, when, 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 when I was with you in Mexico, we were in meetings all the time. Oh, we Come were on. constantly. When, 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 when yeah. we're going to be in Africa, we're going to be in meetings all the time. Come on. Africa knows how to have meetings, all right? And uh, we are going to have the glory of the Lord show up on Revival 10. And uh, one of the things the Lord spoke to us is about giving a car away every oh, yeah. night. Yeah. And uh, I, I've got some other amazing speakers coming in. I mean, I know you and I are going to be there and, and all the rest and Jenny and, uh, you, you know, many others and Pastor Nile and, and all of that. But um, I've got friends coming from all over the world that, that, that are coming to be with us over that time. And, um, and these friends has, have grabbed a hold of the vision with us, and uh, they, they are already saying, well, I want to be a part of this. I, I want to be a blessing to someone. And, and the Lord spoke to me, and uh, this was the craziest part. He spoke to us last year. Yes. In 20, what was it, 23? Yes. Last year he spoke to us, and he said to me, for Revival 10, 
we need to give 10 cars away. And I made the confession without even thinking about it. And then I worked out, well, how do you give? We're only eight nights. And then through a sequence of events, everything worked out that the Lord continued to speak to me about 10 nights for Revival 10. Yeah. So we're going to do it for 10 nights. And us as a team, we're going to be there even ahead of that. And we're going to have like a, 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 I want to call it a ramp up. All right, we, we're going to do a couple of the meetings even before we get into officially Revival 10 on the Friday. And so the week before, we're going to be there. The week before, we're going to be having Revival already those nights. We're going to have the full praise and worship team. It's just going to be a glorious time in the presence of the Lord even the week before. And we're just going to get going. And uh, Brother Eddie James heard about us and what God's doing. And Brother Eddie James says, Andre, I'm coming. He's bringing a whole team with him. Our church, we announced it here in the church, a whole lot of our church people right here from Faith Church Naples are coming. You bringing a, a large group of people Absolutely. with you. Yeah. And uh, 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 Brian Bolt, uh, evangelist Brian Bolt is coming as well. We met him. We did. And uh, he's coming to be with us. And, and Brian got to hear about the car giveaway. He said, how can I be a part of that? Wow. And, uh, and, and, he, and there we are standing talking at NRB. He said, Andre, I'm paying for one of the cars. All right, he said, I'm, I'm, I'm sowing a seed. Now, now people say, well, how much are these cars? These cars are 200,000 Rand, brand new, each of them. We're busy negotiating still the price. What is that? $10,000. Yeah. $10,000 for a car. If you're watching and you want to be part of this, we're going to be giving away. And, and you say, well, who are you going to be giving them to? Whoever the Lord tells us. Right. And we're going to be drawing out a hat. We, we're going to be, it's going to be a draw kind of basis. And I'm not going to commit to how we're going to do it every night because maybe one night Just while you're late. preaching, yeah. maybe one night while Absolutely. you're preaching, the Lord says, yeah. they get the car tonight. Absolutely. We're going to do that. It's here Abs again. And, and the car that you give away, we're going to do it. The car that we give away, we're going to do it. The right. car that Brian Bolt gives away, he's already, he, he's coming. He, he said, I'm going to be there. He said, I'm going to be there. He said, just to be a blessing. And, uh, and, and minister. So I'm telling you, I'm going to introduce you to some men and women of God. Nancy Dufresne is coming. Uh, Curry Blake's going to be there. Uh, great friends from Africa are going to be there. And we've got some new friends. I'm, I'm not yet. I'm busy trying to get them there still. I'm trying to confirm up a few things. But uh, we met some wonderful people. Did we not? Even at NRB. And I put an invite to say, hey, come. <laughs> come and be a part of this. But I want to back up a little bit and then we'll talk about the cars because I want to show you something. All right, we went car shopping. And uh, what I did was, I said to a couple of the dealers, I, I said in our, in our city, I said, um, I'm wanting to buy a couple of cars. Would you come and show me? And uh, little did I know that my guys told them all the same time. So these dealers just showed up. We had cars all over. I, I, our, our outside parking lot or our entrance <laughs> where we operate at the Faith Dome felt like a car sales showroom, all right? They just brought cars. I, when, you, when you buy 10 cars, it, it, you know, sure. they show up. So um, we were casually dressed and I was busy talking to them. And um, here's a little bit of uh, just two minutes of us car shopping for you, all right, for you who's going to get a car. I hope someone out there is going to get a car. You better put in the comment section, a car is mine. Mm -hmm. All right? You better type it right there, right now. You better start claiming it in the spirit. All right? Because uh, we're going to go and we're going to take a look at uh, me having fun car shopping just before we left for back to the USA. Take a look. Pastor Clue, we are car shopping today. Yes, it looks like it. We are car shopping. So, um, so what do you think? What do you think of our showroom here at yeah. uh, the Faith Dome? Are, are we ready for Re Revival X? <laughs> I think so. I uh, think if uh, this doesn't motivate somebody to come, I don't know what will. But, um, look at them. Now, these are not the 10 that we're buying. These are just, uh, they brought out a couple because I wanted, I wanted everyone to see 
that uh, we're actually serious. And um, I mean, we've got different brands represented here. We've got the Nissan, we've got uh, the Renault, the Suzuki, Hyundai. Mm -hmm. The question is, come stand here with Pastor Clerk. The question is, are you coming to Revival X? I'm going to be there. You're going to be there. I'm going to be there. And I'm entering it. Are you entering it? I'm entering it. Do you think you're allowed? I will hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Well, it's going to be a fair and open uh, opportunity for everybody. We're not sure how we're going to do it yet. Deciding all of that. I feel like whenever you see this, if you haven't made plans yet to be a faith revival ex, yeah. today's the day to make the plans because God's going to move powerfully. And I really want to encourage you to plug into what the Lord is going to be doing come, you know, the middle of the year. We know that the, the power of God is going to be moving, the presence of God is going to be there. But I'm telling you something many of you have been believing God for a vehicle. Yeah. This is going to be your opportunity. And uh, I really want to encourage you to make sure you register, be a part of it. I'm, I'm excited just standing here. I'm looking at, I'm imagining already what's going to happen. I mean, think about what took place, uh, you know, Faith Revival 9.0. Yeah. Those two ways, I mean, this is going to be a blessed time. Ten vehicles. Come on. Ten days. Revival. <laughs> Ten. Come on. See you there. Be wrong. Be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel it. I love it. I feel it. I Revival it. 10. Glory be to God. And you know, I just really, this seems like a good place to, to fit this right here. Yeah. People watch this at a distance. <clears throat> they don't know the history of our lives that in fact, the Bible says that we're to be followers of those who through faith and patience have inherited the promises. Great. It says in one translation of uh, following the outcome of their well-spent lives. Wow. You know, Paul said, I'm willing to spend and be spent for you. I've come out of meetings where I felt totally spent. And the Holy Spirit refilled it. And, you know, people are going to be watching all the time. There's somebody watching right now, somewhere, and this is their first experience. This is their first taste of Faith TV USA. So they see, and, and they say, are you like everybody else? This is the gimmick in the grocery store. This is the hype. And I knew I was supposed to share this today, but I didn't know when. And this, yeah, this is yeah, the yeah. perfect moment. Because before we went live, we were already live. Come on. And what I mean by that is I'm talking to the worship team. And, um, and of course, they can pan the camera and do whatever they want. They, they, they do their best to stay out of sight, right? I get it. Mm. But they carry this flow with us. They come into this meeting right. and pray into right. it. They're here early. They sow their self in worship. What they see is what you're seeing in worship is not entertainment. Every camera person behind the scenes, I know them all personally, and we were discussing the word of the Lord in powerful fashion as a group over here, from the drums to the keyboard to the guitar to the vocalist. We're talking about the word Come on. and what God Come spoke on. to them Come this on. morning yeah. and the time they spent in the word early morning before they got here. I, I just want people to know I've, I've been a lot of places. I, I'm humbled and honored to say that, but I'm just saying this is a rare thing the atmosphere of the integrity of making sure we protect both the Word of God and the power of the anointing. Amen. These things like cars and everything else is awesome. And they are awesome because imagine being so prosperous, right. we can be givers. Come on. Imagine Come on. taking Come on. a continent where people are walking everywhere and are in abject poverty and you can change a life by a seed of transportation right. to show them how good God is. But it's not about that. That right. comes from what we were doing that they didn't see when the cameras weren't on. That comes from the discussion we had before we ever went on camera. 
And uh, I've seen it. I've been here. I've been here uh, on live television on a number of occasions all over the world throughout the years. And I don't mean this in a negative way. I'm not being judgmental. But I literally have seen the attitudes and the lifestyles of the people behind the cameras. And they're just paid to run a camera. They're not in the Word. They're not full of faith. They might not even be living a holy life. In fact, some folks operating this kind of a program yeah. have unsaved people doing their video. I just can't imagine this revelation passing through the hands of people that don't understand the value. This is somebody's eternal life. Yeah, yeah. And I wanted to publicly thank your helps team yes. for living holy. Yeah, yeah. For believing God. Right. Backstage while we're speaking, they're not like figuring out what they're going to do next. I can't wait till this is over. They're discussing the word and engaged in the preaching while people are hearing it on the other side of the world. And that they are as much a part of sitting at this table as we are. Right. I, I just wanted to say a public, both an announcement of what I've seen. You can believe me or not believe me. I really don't care about your opinion. I know what I know. I know what I've seen. I'm the one here experienced it. I see their lives. They're well spent lives. And uh, it's such an honor to be part of something where people really are concerned about one thing and one thing alone. That at the end of this broadcast, that one name would be remembered. Yeah, we have speakers come coming. Come on, But every speaker that's coming is going to be talking about one name. Come on, that's right. Not their name. That's right. Not their ministry. The name. And I pray today at the end of this broadcast, people all over the world would see and know what we're about. We're, we're about, Jesus, would you glorify yourself in the midst of the very home or the car where somebody's watching on their device? Would you come through these windows? The world calls them cameras. I call them the great congregation. Come on, come on. Because in Psalm 22, it's about Jesus. He my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And he quoted Psalm 22 on the cross. He used the word to make it through the cross yep. because Psalm 22 is a very description of the cross. By that last verse, it says, it is finished. He cried that out because he lived that out right. on the cross. Right. And right toward the end of Psalm 22, he says, I will declare your name in the midst of the great congregation. Come on. As far as I'm concerned, all of the USA, all of London and the UK, all of Africa, Asia and India to come, and Australia and Latin America to come. <laughs> we will declare the name that's above every name, the only name that counts, the Lord of three worlds. Amen. Amen. The name of Jesus yes. all over the world, for the world's given, us, given to us now is our pulpit. But I just want folks to know what we're about and why. That's right. And it's the fact that we would love and want you to know Jesus of Nazareth has a plan for your life greater than you're currently experiencing. And that when you believe the gospel, it will deliver you into the fullness of the plan he originally created for every man and woman listening. And that a well-spent life is not only a harvest blessing, but the blessing of the Lord does make rich. And rich doesn't, it means money in the bank because it'll produce that. But what rich really means scripturally, a full supply. You will be fully supplied in every area of your life, and he'll add no sorrow with it. That's what I want you to understand. That you may be pining away, saying, well, look at those people. They're, they're giving away cars, and here I am. I, I, I can't even, no, no, you're missing the point. That God's no respecter of persons. And as we're doing this, this works for every human on the planet. This covenant is for you. That's right. This Jesus That's right. That's right. died for, for you, you. That's right. to have a well-spent life. And at the end of that life, that's not all there is. You don't just go in a box and go on the ground. You, you actually have eternity with him. Amen. Come on, come Amen. on. And, 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 and not that we're doing it for the reward, but the essence of the reward of what he promised over the fact that we let go of our life to pick up our cross and followed him. In other words, our life has been spent yeah. laying it down for others because we're his disciples and to the best we can, we're going to look just like him. That's right. Who loves the unlovely, who heals, who touches the untouchable, who does the impossible, who reaches the unreachable, 
and nothing is impossible for you today. I, I really want you to know today's your day of deliverance. I really believe that if you can get a touch today, may this seed inspire you to go back and listen to yesterday's broadcast and the day before and because something has been happening. Come on, come on. That's a journey to deliverance and God's best plan for their lives. Hallelujah. You know, the Lord said to me, um, this year, amongst other things, one of the things that would happen because people would make these choices and open themselves up to the demonic forces of the spirit of Antichrist in this dark day, that at this year it would begin to spiral out of control and mental illness would be at an all-time high. Right. Right. And that despicable acts and unthinkable things would be done by people driven by these demons. And the Lord said, in the midst of this hopelessness, hope will arise. Amen. And, and that he would bring deliverance into these come situations on, on. and lives would be saved, that it would be like Lazarus coming out of the tomb. That there, are, there are people believing God for their loved one who's bipolar and, and, and not even functional. And by the, by the end of the work of the Lord in the name of Jesus and, and what he's going to do with his anointing, they're going to become normal and they're going to have a well-spent life. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean, really, he's going to create lives. We're talking about restoration of souls. We're talking about miracles of a sound mind. Hallelujah. People just coming into the right mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe it's happening now. Yeah. And that's why I don't want them to have such strong opinions and thoughts to resist the very thing that could change their world. Yeah. You know, what you're saying is sometimes we have to put something in to get something out. Absolutely. And, um, and I'm, 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 I'm just picking up the heart of God. People say, why do we do what we do? We do what we do because we want to see souls come to know Jesus. Absolutely. You know, Revival 9, uh, Pastor Tracy, you, you, you didn't make it out for nine. I did not. But in Revival 9, over the eight days, 16 meetings, we had 3,334 salvations in that eight days. I want to believe God. I want to believe God that over Revival 10, something explodes. And that we, because this ministry is about souls. This ministry is about reaching the lost. You're watching this. You're a part of this because of the vision that we carry. But here's the thing. So many of you have just sat watching all the time, but you've never said or you've never made an effort to come to the Great Faith Dome and be in one of the meetings, which you can be, from anywhere in the world. Because the same faith is to get you from America to the Faith Dome as it is from, yeah. you know, Durban to the Faith Dome. It's Absolutely. the same faith. Absolutely. All right? It, it, it costs. It, it's a sacrifice. It's a believing God to be able to be there. You don't have to come for the whole 10 days. You, you could come for three or four days or five days of it, whatever works with your schedule, whatever works with your program. But I want to stir your heart in this. You've watched us now 1,442 days since we started live on the 18th of March, 2020. We have 114 days to go to Revival X or Revival 10, as we call it. That is 114 days for you to believe God financially to be able to be there and to be a part in the glory cloud of the glory of God. Because I'm telling you, every revival, this last revival, and we, we said this, we left this last revival and we came away from revival nine and we said, wow, it was a level up from revival eight, wow. from revival seven. Wow. From revival, so every revival. You, you, you just got back from um, Pastor Brian's place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I did. And you, you said to me, you said it was another level to last year when you were there. Absolutely. It went to another place. And next year will be another level. Absolutely. It's like we're getting closer and closer and we get, it's getting stronger and stronger, the presence of the Lord. And that's what I'm anticipating for Revival 10. I'm anticipating that Revival 10 is going is to 
I, I don't want to use the word break all records because this is not about record keeping, but it's going to break all expectations. Yes. And it's going to break, it's going to break everything we've ever experienced in Revival 9 or any revival earlier. It's, it's going to take us to another level. And I want to stir your heart to register. I want to stir your heart to by faith. And this is the thing. We say to people over and over again, you need to register. You need to register. And then people don't register. They all wait for the last week. They all wait until they've got their plans together instead of registering in order to get your plans together. Absolutely. Because what you've got to do is you've got to take a faith statement and you've got to say, I'm going every year. Absolutely. For the last 26 years. I have, I don't know how many years it's been with you, but I've always set that time with Brother Kenneth Copeland. Oh, sure. And the minister's time is my priority. The first thing I ever put on my calendar outside of my family vacation, I put down there, that is where I'm going to be, and then I plan my year around it. It's about putting God first. It's about putting a time and setting a time aside. And I felt, as you were speaking, I felt to stir your heart in order for you to get what God's got for you, because this is our heart. Our heart is about souls. Our heart is about the anointing. Our heart is about the miracles, signs and wonders of what God's going to do. The cloud of His glory, the presence. It's not about the car. It's not about the giveaways. The giveaways are just something that God has spoken to me to do over Revival 10, to celebrate Revival 10, to be a blessing. And He said, 10 people need to go home. And, and I'm telling you, God is going to order who those 10 people are. Oh, sure he is. You, you're going to see. You're going to see. My question is, are you one of them? Are you one of them that's going to put your faith out there? Are you one of them that's going to believe God? Are you one of them that's going to say, I'm going to register. I'm going to be a part. I'm going to be an early bird registration. Don't be a laggard. Don't be someone that hangs at the back end waiting for it. Because part of the winners, if you want to win, them, you've got to register. But you need to register by faith, not for anything else. You need to register by faith right now. And this is what I wanted to say to you. You register for why? For why do I do that? I register because I'm putting my faith and I'm saying, God, I'm going to go to Revival 10. I'm going to go by faith. Right now on your screen is the QR code. Right now is the website. You can go. You can register right now. Right now. Hundreds of you are watching. Have you registered? You say, well, I don't have the money. I didn't ask if you got the money. Have you registered? You say, I don't have leave. I didn't ask if you got leave. I said, have you registered? You say, I haven't booked my hotel room. Have you registered? Have you put your faith into the place? Registration is free. costs nothing. Absolutely. But it's making a covenant commitment. When the Lord spoke to us about airplanes for the ministry and what He wanted to do in our ministry, before I could do that, the Lord challenged me. He said, you don't know anything about a plane. You don't know anything about flying. You don't know about the laws of lift. You know nothing. I said, what do you mean? He said, how can you believe me for a plane if you can't yeah. even prepare for the plane? Absolutely. And I've said this many times, 114 days for you to get your license because let me just say this. No one's getting a car who doesn't have a license. Right. No one's getting a car. If you don't have a license, you are not getting a car. You've got 114 days to get a license. You've got 114 days. You say, well, I thought anyone, I never said anything about who's going to win. But I'm telling you, you need to register and you need to have a license in order to, to stand a chance to even get the car. Absolutely. I can't give the car if you don't have a license. So, so, so here's, here's the issue. Where's your faith? Because you say, well, I want a new car. How are you ever going to get a new car if you can't believe God for a driver's license? Absolutely to be able to do what you should do. And I speak to people all over. It's like I was speaking to the church the other day. I said, how many of you want to come with us to Africa? I said, how many of you got passports? Right. They don't even have a passport. There's people sitting in this church that don't have a passport. They don't have a, they don't have a desire to travel. How are you ever going to be used of God if you don't have a passport? How are you ever going to be able to go? How are you ever going to believe to travel? How are you ever going to believe even to go to your dream vacation destination? around the world if you don't have a passport. These are the things that are reality. But I want to ask you today that the power of God stirs your heart in faith 
and that you connect into this. You want to add something, sweetie? Well, actually, and Pastor Tracy um, said something earlier as well. It just triggered off again for the expectation for Revival X right. or for Revival 10. Um, and he spoke about even the demonic activity that has been, and I know we, we don't speak or give glory to the devil at all because we know he's a defeated foe. Yeah. But I do believe that since October 7th, the things that happened in this world and in the Middle East definitely unleashed another level of demonic activity right, on this right. earth that we are literally catapulted into what uh, Timothy, well, Paul wrote to Timothy about in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 to 2. And it does make me think of what it says in Isaiah 60 as well, where it speaks about that there's great darkness on the earth and great or even deep darkness on the people of the earth. They are seducing spirits. They are most definitely, there's a demonic attack on the mental health of people that is on the increase. If you even look at the statistics, it's higher now than it has ever been before because the devil knows his time is short. And so there is an all out attack on the sanity of people, whether they are in the church or out of the church. And so in this time, and I want you to understand this, the reason why we are saturating ourselves in hours upon hours and upon hours of sitting under the anointed Word of God is because the Bible says just as much as there is darkness on the earth and just as much as there is deep darkness on the people, it says arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord will be risen upon you. But it also says that the knowledge of the glory of the Lord will cover this earth. Praise God as the waters cover the sea. The knowledge of the glory. When I say knowledge, I'm literally speaking about the revelation knowledge of God is unleashed even more in intensity, in volume and capacity on this earth more far more than what the darkness is. And I really believe that we need to understand the days that we are living in now, there is so much more of the knowledge of revelation knowledge of who God is in us, what is available for us in these last days than there is that the devil even has capacity to unleash on this earth. There is so much more that we can live in in the full of what Jesus did for us to literally, like you said, harvest a full yield, the capacity, the the majority, the, the greatest capacity of harvest of the blessing of God for the saved, for the believer. It, it's happening now. It is for us now. And the only way that we're going to be walking in that fullness is by allowing ourselves to be saturated with the truth of God's Word. So in 1 Timothy 4, 1 to 2, it says, But the Holy Spirit distinctly and expressly declares that in the latter times, the times that we're living in now, some will turn away from the faith, giving attention to deluding and seducing spirits and doctrines that demons teach through the hypocrisy and pretensions of liars whose consciences are seared and cauterized. Yes, there is great, great, great uh, deception that is happening right now. And we are told to be very much aware of that. But there is a counter action that we take as the children of God. That is to get under the unadulterated, praise God, the anointed, (laughs) the unstoppable revelation knowledge of the truth of God's Word. And we're only going to do that by doing what my husband just said. Seek first before you do any other planning, before you consider all the considerations that are only going to contaminate your faith. That's not what true faith is. Real faith 
is not taking into consideration all the obstacles that'll come against what God's will is for your life. Right. So what is that? God, before I even consider, am I going to get a hotel booking? Before I even consider, am I going to get the leave? Before I even consider, that's not even possible because I don't have that financial means. Before I even do that, I first seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and then all the rest will fall into place. Oh. So that's what we do. I understand with all clarity the hour that I'm living in now. I understand the urgency of it. This is what you should be saying. And I understand that there is an all-out attack of the enemy on the sanity of my mind and the soundness of my mind. And so I choose to counter act that attack and I will be forward thinking and I will take the first step. I won't wait for the enemy to do his attack. I will take the step first and I will go and register right now. I won't even delay. I will register right now, book my seat, make sure that I am going to be in the place where the Word of God, where the anointing of God is going to saturate me, spirit, soul, body, that I will be so full to overflowing with the fullness of God Himself who fills all with Himself so that I will be strong and I will rise and shine with victory Hallelujah. in Jesus' name. Wow. That was great. <laughs> that was powerful. That, that wasn't an exhortation. That yeah. was a prophecy. Yeah. That's what I, I'm sitting here and I'm saying, I'm saying, you just prophesied. And, and I didn't you just, shout. And you didn't shout. You, 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 you just prophesied. You just prophesied right there. And I, I, th that's why I looked at Pastor Tracy and I thought to myself, <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is a word from God for you. Yes. For you. Thanks. You say, what must I do? You can send an email on your screen there, uh, revivalx at myfaithtv.com, or you can scan the QR code, or if you're on a handheld device, just go to the website, myfaith.tv, and you can register. There's a place where you'll be able to find Revival X, and you'll be able to click on it and register. There's many different ways. Registration's free. Yeah. And I want, I want to invite you to put your faith out there. I want to invite you to, to seriously tonight, just, just get your faith out and watch what God's going to do. God's going God's to bring this all into pass. And I, I want us, Pastor Trace, just for the next few moments, we're going to worship. Absolutely. And uh, because in, in about seven or so minutes, uh, well, just a couple of, or maybe about 10, 12 minutes, we're going to cross over and then we're going to begin to share the word of the Lord. And um, I, I, I want us just to, to go into, you want to add anything here? Because I really, no, no, it's great. It's I, I, I really feel we need to go into worship right now. God is stirring your heart. God is getting you ready. That prophetic word that Jenny just released as a <laughs> challenge to you couldn't be any clearer, couldn't be any stronger than do something about it. I'm looking at the hundreds of you watching even on YouTube and Facebook right now. You know what? You can register. It costs you nothing, absolutely nothing. And then I must make this one comment. We are running the children's revival at the same time. It's that week of school holidays. You bring those children. You get them saturated. My son, in fact, I'm going to show you a picture. My son, Christian, as a young boy, got under the anointing, and he got the call of God to do camera work. And uh, today he's producing. Today he's traveling the world. He's doing what God's called him to do, and he's about to embark onto another direction for the next six months with us right here in the ministry. God's about to do something. But, but I, I want you to understand, this is, this is young children. When you get the call of God and the touch of God in their life, they get involved. Take a look at this picture. I, I, I want you to see this one picture. Look at him. There he is. <laughs> All right, there he is, years and years ago, behind the camera, doing, and God touched him. And, and all of my kids were exactly the same. If, if, I, if I go and ask any one of them, what was the greatest meetings of your life? They'll say it was the meetings with Joe Manor. Right. It was the meetings where the power of God through Brother Joe Manor came upon them. And they were in 
a week of meetings exactly like we are going to be putting together for your children. And I want you to get ready for that. I want you to get ready for those meetings. Bring your children. Register. There's a, there's a place. You go to the website. There's a way that you can register for the children as well. And adults, you can be in the meetings and watch what God's going to do. I feel His presence so strong. It's strong. Um, just simply this. So many people think that children are too young. Yeah to properly respond. It's almost as if it's a babysitting service where we're having the kids so the adults can go to church. But in the day of Pentecost, at the advent of the church, when the church was born, in Acts chapter 2, he said, the promise is unto you and to your children. Come on, come on. And to as many, those that are near, those that are far, as many as the Lord our God shall call. I'm telling you, we're, we're making a mistake when we do not get our children in Holy Ghost meeting. Yeah, yeah. We looked at it during these days where in Luke 11, it was very clear, very, very clear. He said, if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father give the Holy Ghost to them that ask him? Meaning the greatest gift, heaven or earth, that you could give to your children is the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. There is no other gift that could give their child greater and get them in those Holy Ghost Thank meetings. You. That's right. That's Thank right. you, God. And I know it was those meetings that touched my children's life in a revival for a whole week. And it's going to be the power of God at Revival 10 that's going to touch your children. Bring your teenagers. Bring your young adults. Get them all. We're going to have one of the biggest youth meetings on that one Friday. The whole day is dedicated to the young people. It's going to be a phenomenal time in the presence of the Lord. I, you, you're going to see what God's going to do. We, we've, got, we've got times that are dedicated to the ladies. You say, well, what are the men going to do? You're going to be there as well, but it's going to be specially <laughs> dedicated to, to certain groups of what God's doing. And we're going to see a move of the presence of the Lord like we've never seen in the great faith, though. And, um, and I'm, I'm excited. I'm ready. But right now, I want us to worship for the next couple of moments. And I want us to go grab a hold, touch the hem of his garment, Pastor Tracy and myself will come out of the worship and we're going to be going into a time where we're going to be addressing the ministers at uh, the uh, Fivefold Leadership Conference with Pastor Nikki in Johannesburg for a couple of minutes and we're just going to carry on with you straight on. And the Word of the Lord is going to get strong today and your life is never going to be the same. Let's flow and let's go into the heavens. Start worshiping with us wherever you are in your home. Hallelujah.
Over. Let's see if we can get this link going. Praise Hallelujah. Pastor Tracy Harris, we are live across Africa and we are right now in NBCFC. Come on, every one of you, we love you. God bless you. What a time I know you guys are having. And uh, we're just so honored to be able to come live into uh, that amazing facility with you on this glorious night. FLC is taking place, my good friends. Nikki and Lillian, we love you. We appreciate you. Gebhardt, I know you've got a word of God tonight on your heart. So get ready. You are in for a blessing. And then to Dion Hockey, great to see you in the audience as well. Uh, Freddie van Rensburg, many of you others. And uh, Petrus and Monique van Rensburg, many of you are there. And uh, welcome to every one of you all the way from the USA. Brother Tracy Harris, it's Glory happening. Glory to God. Not only is it happening, we are one sound, one voice all over the continents of the earth to shake this world in this 11th hour harvest. I've been there. Hello, Pastor Nikki. Hello, Sister Lillian. Hello, family. Hello, church. I hear there's 900 of you mighty eagles gathered together in the glory. Woo! Glory to God. And there shall be no more curse. I know the glory in that building. There's glory all over that house right now. Come on. Now, here's the thing I'm excited about. And Pastor Nikki, we're just so sorry we could not get there and make it out due to our timelines this side. But I'm telling you, next year, we are putting this on the calendar. It's going to be even bigger and better than ever before. We are part with you, every single one of you. We are with you in spirit. And uh, the fivefold leadership conference that is taking place, we are very committed into the vision. And uh, Pastor Tracy Harris, we're doing a similar thing right here in America. Absolutely. And we are going to be linking America with South Africa and with the United Kingdom coming 2025. It is going to be bigger and better than ever before, and we're looking forward to it. So I know God's got a plan. I know God's got a purpose for this, and I know that God is going to move in a very special way in your hearts. And so we've got some things we wanted just to take a few moments and share with you because we're excited when God uh, begins to move in leaders, everything shifts. And uh, this is what we found uh, as we've traveled the nations of the world, wherever we've gone, we were just recently, at the end of last year, we were in Mexico together and hundreds of leaders came together in Mexico as well. God is linking people all over the world. When God can touch the men of God and the women of God, everything shifts in a nation. Right now, South Africa, right now, Africa, right now, all over the USA and in, in the UK, wherever we're broadcasting the signal, nations are being shifted because men and women like you are getting hungry, you're getting desperate, and as Jenny was even speaking earlier, we are believing God that we are going to move into that place of His presence and seek His presence in a greater way than ever before. That's why you've come together. That's why we're experiencing what we're experiencing even tonight. Glory to God. You know, uh, 
Brother Andre, as we stand here, I just already know and sense in my spirit, I'd feel a deep connection. It's as if we're standing on that stage. Correct. I can sense it. I can sense that as you use the word nation, there's, no, there's national leaders. Yes. You know, I, I, I begin to think as you were talking, and I have a scripture I'd like to read, but I begin to think as you were talking, what would have happened to the nation of Israel if it had been reversed and 10 of the leaders came back and gave a good report and only two gave a negative report. Right, right. If Come you on. could get the majority of the leaders <laughs> to believe they could take the land, a whole nation will go in. Come on. Come so on. what happened was the leaders were not believing they could take it. It wasn't the people. The people followed those leaders. And, you know, this is such a huge thing. I think most leaders do not know that ministry isn't something that's just given you. It is a gift. Right. But it's not just given. It doesn't just come upon you. I'm looking to my left. I see Sister Jenny. We're all in agreement right here. She's in there with you. And I'm just looking into the camera to you right now. I have a word for you. I mean, a very brief word. But I am saying to you, I know in my spirit there's something in that room that's going to apprehend you and you're going to apprehend it and take hold of it and you're not going to leave that meeting the same ever again. Your territory is going to increase and you're going to step into taking some territory. Come on. You know, Paul told his son Timothy in the faith, he said in 1 Timothy 6, he talked about some and the way they were operating, but he said, but thou, 1 Timothy 6, 11. But thou, O man of God, you, O man of God, flee those things Come on. and follow after righteousness. Glory be to God. Godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. Now listen to this. Fight the good, good fight God. of God. faith. Yeah. Lay hold on eternal life whereunto you are also called and have professed a good profession among many witnesses. This is, I give you charge in the sight of God. And here's what he said, that before Jesus Christ, who makes alive all things, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession, keep this commandment. Here's the point that he's making. He said, whereunto you're called. Come on. There is eternal life. That's not heaven when you die after you've done a good job right. preaching. Right. He's saying you're called, that there is a life the very life that raised Jesus from the dead is attached to your call, O man of God. And you're not going to get that, that anointing, that authority, that demon casting yeah, out, yeah, mountain yeah, moving, yeah, nation yeah. shaking, nation changing, glorious, miracle working, fullness of harvest, oh, yielding on, revival, days of heaven on earth. It's not going to happen in your ministry until you by faith lay hold of the life that's attached to what you're called to. Come on, come on. You're not just called to give a good word. There is the life that raised Jesus from the dead that's attached to that call. And unless we lay hold of it, well, how do we lay hold of it? We profess a good confession. That's right. I know so many preachers that are talking down about their church. They're talking down about their gift. They literally are not operating in faith because out of the mouth, out of the, out of the mouth comes the abundance of the heart. Out of right, the abundance of the heart, right. the mouth speaks. So we see the tongue is the hand of the spirit man. What we say about what our ministry is going to do is the ministry Come on. laying Come on. hold yeah. of the call. Yeah. So I really want to encourage everyone in that room today. I mean, in fact, there's other verses. We only have a limited time, but this is, look what he said. Yeah. Meditate on this gift. Give yourself wholly to it, for you'll save yourself and them that hear you. That's right. That means men are saved by what they hear. Yourself yeah. and them that hear you. That's right. That means the preacher must hear some things to get his ministry to lay hold on a life that he's imparting through his words to those he's preaching to so they can lay hold of what he's laid hold of. Hallelujah. We are ministries more than teaching. It's impartation. That's right. There'll be impartation in that room, glories in that room for you to lay hold of a national diplomatic dominion that's going to change everything in your world. Be prepared to change from this very day. This is what I feel, Pastor Tracy. Wow. I just feel something's about to be released. And our good friend, Gebhardt, is about to minister the word of the Lord over there. They're about to go into worship. But I want every one of you to stand in the house right now. 
I want you to lift your hands and, I, and we want to pray that tonight everything shifts in your mind. Everything shifts. Tonight everything changes. Every negative word that has been spoken over you, every negative word that you have ever spoken over your congregation or over your ministry, no matter how big or how small, everything that has ever tried to stop you, everything that has ever tried to hold you back, everything that has tried to keep you in a place of a place where you should not be. We turn it around tonight in the name of Jesus. We release right now the power of the living God over you that tonight you will have one of the greatest encounters of your ministry. That tonight the fire of God would in infuse in every portion of your being. That tonight the anointing of God even as Brother Gebhard prays over you, even as Brother Nikki ministers over you, even as the anointing fills that room in worship that you're about to get into, my prayer for you is that tonight it shifts and tonight your ministry goes into the more and the more and the more that God has for you in 24. I prophesy over you. I prophesy over your church. I prophesy over your ministry. I prophesy over your finances. I prophesy over every area of your life, your family. I prophesy over your business. I prophesy over your house. I prophesy over your neighborhood, wherever you are. Step into all that God has for you. You are going to see a greater release of His glory. You're going to see a greater release of His power and His anointing than ever before. And it starts right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I am sure. Yeah. I am sure that when you leave that place, you will go back home. You will come to everyone you meet, every meeting you come go on, into, every place on. you preach, every territory you inhabit. You will come in the fullness you, of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. This is the year of fullness, and we are sure, you're absolutely Hallelujah. fully persuaded that yeah. the fullness of that blessing you carry will get released in your house, on your family, in your finances, in your health, in your church, you, in Jesus. your territory, in your city, and in your your nation. Oh, <laughs> glory, this will be the glory. greatest year you have ever had yes. in the history of your life. Glory, it? glory, glory. Now, Pastor Nikki, before I hand back to glory. you, I want to invite every single one of you. We are doing this again in June in the Great Faith Dome. Pastor Nikki will tell you about it. Revival 10, we have set aside three days just for the ministers, just for you. We have realized that God has stirred our heart, both Pastor Tracy, myself, and Brother Nikki, and all the team that are there with him, that this is something we are believing God to do more than once a year. This is the first one right there at FLC for the beginning of the year. Now, I know these have happened before, but we have linked across nations and around the world. We are much a part of FLC as you are right there. And now we're gonna take it into the Great Faith Dome in June. We want you to register. We want you to become a part of it. And we want you to connect with us and watch what God's going to do. We love you. We appreciate you. Pastor Nikki, you are my best friend in the whole wide world. We love you. And we'll see you very soon. God bless you. FLC, give a big hand to the Lord. From Pastor Tracy Harris and myself, back to you. Come on, put your hands together for Pastor Andre. Pastor Tracy. Hallelujah, wow. hallelujah, hallelujah. I feel the power of God. Now, we, we still got a TV program here, okay? We still got a TV program happening, okay? That was just a couple of moments that we went out. Take them off monitors, please. That was just a couple of moments that, 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 that we just pushed in there into that meeting because of what I want, I want people to understand at home. There, were, there are over 900 ministers gathered together in one place. And those same ministers, they're going to be coming to the Great Faith Dome. We're going to be there in June. We're going to have a, the, and, and we've spoken about the next, in four months' time, we're going to meet again. We're going to call them again. We've got to get them saturated. Absolutely. We've got to get them into all that God has for them. And we have to get into all that God's got for us. You know, Brother Andre, uh, I, you, you know, you never, once something is really by the Spirit of God emphasized, 
And then he says it once, and then he says it twice. Yeah, he's doubling yeah. up. He, he's, he's, he's really being emphatic. And, uh, and I saw this, and I knew it was something that I felt I should share, but it wasn't the right moment before. I want to revisit for just a minute here the exhortation that came from you and the prophecy that came from you yeah. about registering. Right. About the people that are watching, making their hotel reservation, and the people that are watching making that step because faith of that works is dead. And here's what came up in me while you were talking about everyone that's out there was this. Right. I uh, was privileged and have been privileged to minister to ministers. We love preachers. And ministering to ministers over now decades and then being part of an executive uh, team of over a thousand ministers worldwide. Well, actually a thousand ministers in the United States and then around the world. I was the president of that for a season and all of that. And of course we have our own affiliation. Point is, minister after minister of people that I loved, that I knew were men of God, mm. I would say, are you coming to the convention? I'm talking about preaching. Right, now, I'm not right, talking right. about the normal person that says, I don't know if I can go and get time off work. Yeah, I'm talking about yeah. a preacher. And the preachers would say, well, I just don't know. Is that those hotel rooms are pretty expensive and we just don't have it in our budget this year. Right, I mean, right. and, and they're eight months, 10 months. We're, we're, we're at the meeting talking about next year and they're already deciding they can't come. And these are preachers. Right. No wonder their people don't have any faith. Come on. Because come on. the preacher won't make a hotel room believing God he'll have the money. That's a good, yeah. Now You're that's right. what came up in me when you were prophesying. Well, well right now, you've got to understand, there were 900 preachers in that room. I know. But how many more preachers are watching even right now? That's my whole point behind it. Yeah. We're not still speaking to those preachers. We're telling people that if the preachers aren't operating in the word of the Lord, no wonder. Miracles aren't happening in the church. It's financial right. breakthrough. That's right. Jesus said, "We, in fact, if you were watching, you heard us. Yeah. We were all live. Yeah. You heard the word of the Lord. We're called unto life. Mm. Every believer. Now, there's the fivefold ministry like that, but according to the book of Galatians, we are called unto liberty. And according to what we just heard in Timothy and other places, we're called unto life." It also says every person watching has the ministry of reconciliation, which is actually restoration. And it says we've received that ministry. Mm. Nobody has a ministry they won't receive. In other words, they have to make a decision to lay hold right. on the promise of what they're called to. It doesn't just happen. It's right. not like you fall right. under a tree and the apple falls off and hits you in the head. And wow, Sir Isaac Newton. <laughs> this is not the way spiritual law works. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If it worked that way, then many people would have been healed that touched Jesus. Right. But that woman was the only one healed. And a multitude touching him, they got nothing. Right, right. She touched him purposefully to lay hold mm -hmm. on the life in him. Mm -hmm. And I'm encouraging everybody watching now. He wouldn't keep bringing this up if heaven wasn't serious. That's right. About getting life to them. He's not just about a preacher trying to get you to a meeting. It's about God trying to get you in a position where he can get something to you. That's right. That's right. What if that woman had stayed in her house and not going out in the street? Yeah. She had to somehow get in proximity to him to touch him. Right, right. She had to move from where she was to go where her faith was propelling her to go. To go, yeah, yeah. To that point of contact. Faith is always doing. Always. Faith never stands stagnant. No. Faith never waits. Faith does. Faith moves. We need to move. We need to make that decision. We need to come into that place in our life where we actually do something. I'll never forget this building we're in. I was at home. And I'd been looking at this building. Yes. Now we're only in one little piece of it. It's a big building. And we're in one little piece. But I, I'll never forget, I was at home and I'd been praying and praying and praying and I'd been riding past this building and I was looking for this building. And I was, and I, I really felt this is what God was stirring in my spirit. I really had a, an unction. But the timing was never right. And I was at home the one day. And what did the Lord do? The Lord said, go today. 
and speak to them. Yeah. And I'll never forget, I, I, I got in my car and I drove here to the building and I came to talk to them right here at this building. And I'm, I'm not talking 10 years ago. I'm talking recently when we've just acquired this building. And I walked in and I said, I've come to talk to you about the building. Do you know what their exact words were? Their response to me, the very first words were, who told you? Wow. I'll never forget those words. Who told you for this building? I said, what do you mean who told me? They said, who told you that we have just made a decision to list it and sell it? Wow. Up to that point, I'd got a denial, a denial, a denial, a denial because I was pushing it in my time. Yes. And I hadn't done when I'd heard the voice of God to do something about it. You see, you've got to push out when God speaks to you in faith because your miracle is in your movement. Without a movement, you'll never have the miracle. What did he say? Yes. To Peter in the boat. That's what he said to Peter in the boat. Peter's in the boat. He said, come. Yeah. If Peter had stayed in the boat, he would have never, ever experienced defying know. gravity. Absolutely. He would have never experienced getting into that place of stepping on a substance that you and I both know you can't walk on. You just, we know it's, it's an impossibility. But what did he do? He responded. He did something. You see, he has the point. What are you believing God to do in your life? What is the miracle that you trust in God for? What do you need? What are you wanting? What are you wanting to experience? Because I'll never forget, it was the moment when I traveled and I went all the way to Johannesburg in 1995. I'll never forget it. Jenny and I were pastoring. We'd been called of God. We'd been married just three years. We got married in 92. I was three years, well, really four years myself, three years with her in ministry. And we had just pushed into ministry. And we were doing everything that God told us to do. But I'll never forget, it was in a meeting in, in a great facility in Johannesburg, South Africa, where God spoke to us and took us into another level. But we had to take everything from the inside of us to go to that meeting, Absolutely. to be in that meeting, to sit under that anointing in order to receive in that meeting. Had we not gone, we would never have today what we have. And I'm saying, what is that? Understanding the anointing of God, the presence of God, walking in the fullness of who God is in every area of our life. And then the call of God came to us, and I'll never forget again, another example of this is it was, it was a friend of mine who said to us, come and uh, come with us. We, wanna, we, wanna, we want you to come to Brother Kenneth Copeland in Fort Worth, Texas. I didn't even know where Fort Worth, Texas was. <laughs> All right? And, uh, and I said, how are we going to get there? How are we going to? It was plane tickets. It was everything that Jenny and I needed to go. We never had the money. We never had the money for our hotel room. I'll never forget our first time in Fort Worth, Texas. We slept on the sleeper couch in the room with our friends. They were in the bedroom. We were on the sleeper couch. And we were sleeping in the hotel room because we could not afford to pay the hotel bill. But we made a decision we would go. I sat under that ministry in, at Brother Kenneth Copeland. Something happened on the inside of me. The word of faith came into the inside of us, changed our life, repositioned us. Why? Because we went, because we did, because we moved, because we felt the word of God and we did something about it. We believed God financially to be able to get there. And that's what happened. Absolutely. And everything changed in our life. I'm feeling t tonight... Tonight, things are about to shift in people's hearts, in people's lives. You've got to make a decision. If you can put God first, and that's what I loved about what Jenny said too. Yeah. Seek first the kingdom this of God. This is all about value. What are you valuing? Yeah. Absolutely. Do you want to take your leave and use it for vacation? Your private time to go to the beach? <laughs> or are you prepared to take maybe some unpaid leave? some I'm time off sure. and say, Lord, I'm going to go just even three days, four days. There's a weekend. You can come. 
You could join us Wednesday night and be there Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, take the last two days off work. Yeah. You see, there's many ways that you can do this. But what I think we're trying to say is, where's your heart? Absolutely. Where's the desire? Because with that will come the act of faith. It will. Just another comment I have is simply this. We have some family members that years ago, they were in mission work and they were extended. They, they Miracles, cast out demons. They were faith-filled people. It wasn't that they didn't have faith, but they had pushed it to the point to where they had basically exhausted their self spiritually and didn't get where they could be tanked up, but they didn't know it. They were in prayer and the Lord said, come apart before you come apart. Wow. They were on the brink of just coming apart. Didn't realize it, didn't know it, because it looked like everything was fine. But he took them out, and it was a Brother Copa meeting. Actually, this happened to be a Brother Copa meeting as well. He was in Canada. They went, and they said, well, okay, Lord, we've obeyed you. What are we here for? There wasn't a lot of personal ministry. Last night, sang the song, the whole deal. He turned to walk off the stage, and then he turned in the midst of the whole chorus, and right the very last thing he did, they thought the meeting was over. Turned and said, is so-and-so in the room? Wow. Oh, it's a huge wow, story. Wow, wow, the point wow. I'm trying to make is wow. this is so important to hear that still small voice to say there's something there for you that will get you where you're spending all your energy trying to get to. It will propel you supernaturally to get there. And uh, you talked about faith is a movement. Faith has action to it. And I tell people this because, um, and it's exactly what you've just said, but faith is a noun. I mean, you know, when you talk about when you're looking at the actual um, articulate grammar, faith is a noun, person, place, or thing, but believe is a verb. Mm -hmm. And that means a verb has action. Come on. So the truth is people say, well, I'm believing God. Well, not if you're not acting. So come you on, have come faith. On, come on, come on. You have faith. Everybody has it, but they're not believing That's right. until they act. Right. And that's what you're saying. That's right. I'm believing God. Well, yeah, how do I know? Because you, 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 you've... You've registered. <laughs> that's it. Right there. Come on. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. You've done something. Praise yeah. God. Absolutely. You've done something. Let's do this tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Let's... I'm sensing this, and I don't know what you're feeling, but I'm sensing, and I'm looking at the clock, and again, the, the, the program's gone in the way God wants it to go. But I, I feel... Tonight, there needs to get a seed in the ground into this network. And this is what I, I really felt. Tonight, I want you to put a seed of faith in the ground for what God is going to do to get you to Faith Revival 10. Faith Revival X. In other words, I want you to put a seed in the ground and say, God, I, I'm going to believe you. I'm, I'm going to push my faith to a level and I'm going to put a seed in the ground. And this is what I felt tonight. Glory to God. There is enough faith, I believe, across the networks and around the world for you to put a seed in the ground for us tonight. I'm just saying tonight to cover one of those motor vehicles. I believe that. Sure. There's, enough, there's enough faith right now, you say, why am I doing that? I'm, I'm attaching your faith to something <laughs> because I want it to be attached to something that you're going to sow a seed tonight and you're going to put it in the ground and you're going to say, I'm going to plant a seed and we'll take tonight's offering that comes in all over Africa. Anyway, we're going to take tonight's offering and we're going to say, we're going to pay for one of those vehicles yeah. from the offering tonight. That's what I really felt. But it's not us doing it. It's you doing it. In other words, you are sowing a seed to be a blessing to someone else. And we're going to put all of that together. So even if it's 100 rand or 1,000 rand or 50 rand, it makes no difference. Maybe it's $10, $100, $1,000. It makes no difference. Whatever the amount that you sow 
tonight into this broadcast, right now, live right now, as you sow it, we're going to collate it all together. And can you believe it's not just going to be about Brian Bolt giving one vehicle. Right. All right, it's not just going to be about Nancy Dufresne sowing one vehicle. It's not just going to be about Tracy Harris sowing one vehicle. It's not going to be about Andre and Jenny sowing one vehicle. It's going to be about all of us together putting a seed in the ground to say, we did this, this vehicle is our blessing tonight. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have that blessed vehicle, that one that we all give to, and it's going to be ours. So when we give yeah. that one, we're all going to give it together. That's exciting. And we're all going to be that's a blessing exciting. together. Amen. And that's how I believe. And I, that's what I really felt God wanted us to do. So I want, I want you to get, and I want you to put in the comment section or the, the little tagline in your giving, or the reference, I believe it's called, when you give, and those details are on the screen right now, how that you can give. But when you sow a seed tonight, I want you to put the words car, C-A-R, car, C-A-R, because I want to assign that seed. I want to make sure that seed goes into a car. And if we get two vehicles, we'll do two. Whatever it's going to be, I want you to put the word car in it. Now listen, this is only, we only need 200,000 rand. We only need $10,000. That's just for one vehicle. I, I, I want you to understand that. But we're going to do that together tonight, and that's going to be our seed. And this is what the Lord told me it needs to represent. It needs to represent your transportation to get Absolutely. to Revival that's 10. What I, what it needs to represent your movement. Yeah. That, that which you need in God. You sowing into a vehicle because nice. you need a vehicle to get you there. Yeah. You need an air ticket to get there. You need fuel in your tank to get there. Wow. You need what you believe in, a bus ticket, a train ticket. You need to hire a donkey. You need to get on a <laughs> bicycle. You need to do whatever you need to do. You need to get down to the great faith dog. So tonight you put a seed in the ground and tonight you register. Yeah. They just texted me. They said 671 people have already registered. Woo! All right. Already, oh, already God. tonight, That's right exciting. now, six, 671 of you have got this. 671 of you have already grabbed a hold of moving. this. You're already moving. You're already moving. They're watching the registrations even right now. Because they're saying and they're understanding, hold on, there's people that are getting this. And I'm talking just tonight. I'm talking just this moment since we started up till now. 671 of you grabbed a hold of this. Praise God. Glory to God. That can be a thousand of you. That should be 10,000 of you. Glory to God. Glory to God. And that's when I spoke to Brian Bolt in particular, and I'm just using him as one example at the NRB. When I spoke to him, he said, Andre, I'm coming. He said, I'm coming. I said, Brian, I, he said, I'm coming. He said, what you've told me, he said, I'm coming. And he said, I'm not coming without a seed. I said, Brian, what do you mean? He said, you told me you, about these cars. I was just sharing with him. I'm talking to him as a friend. He said, I'm paying for one of those. He said, we sowing, we, 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 we getting behind one of those vehicles. Glory to God. He said, our ministry, now, now listen to this. And his TV program is on the network. You need to watch it. Powerful, powerful evangelist. He said, we are putting a seed in the ground. And this is what he told me. He said, because Revival 11, he looked at his calendar. He said, Revival 11, I want to be at Revival 11. And then he said this to me. He said, I'm going to believe God at Revival 11. He said, I'm going to believe God to give me a strategy and a way and a plan he said, we've got to go into the highways and the byways. We've got to go to the poor and the needy. Absolutely. Compel them to come. And in. compel them to come. He said, if we've got to hire buses, he says, I'm going to cover the cost for Revival 11. We're going to believe God. He said, Revival 11, he said, he said I, I'm going to do whatever it takes. He said, I need to get my feet on the ground right there. He said, and so I'm going to put a seed in advance in Revival 10 for a car because he said, I'm believing for 100 buses. He said, I'm believing. He said, I'm, I'm believing to do something for Revival 11. He said, because we're going to fill that place. And he said, we're going to have a glory movement of salvation like we've never had because he's an evangelist. Yeah. He just wants to see souls come to Absolutely. know Jesus like you and me. Absolutely. And Absolutely. Uh, so he, he understands putting a seed in the ground for souls to come to know Jesus. One vehicle, he says, can represent a hundred buses. Glory to God. The God of the hundredfold. The God of the hundredfold. 
And, um, and this is what we're doing. So I want you right now, I want you right now, if you want to add, then I want you to pray, Pastor Tracy, because I want to pray for every seed. I want you to do that. And I want us to pray for every seed tonight. Then we're going to break bread. And tonight's gone different, and I'm okay with that because there's an anointing. Remember that word, car, C-A-R, car is the word that you're going to put in the ground as you, as you put that in the reference comment. And as you put a seed into that car tonight, listen to me, you have the same rightful reward in giving a car Absolutely. as what we have in giving a car. Sorry. So when we pick up those keys and we give that car, you claim it and you say, God, this is my car that I'm giving because you've put a seed in the ground because tonight you heard the call of God and tonight you responded, C-A-R, car. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be what you're going to believe God to get you there. Believe God to be a part of those meetings. Believe God to take time off. Believe God to provide everything, hotel accommodation, everything that you need, and everything's on the website, myfaith.tv. Or there's the QR code, and there's a way that you can do all of that, but right now the banking details are up. Okay. Right now the opportunity for you, if you're in, in the USA, you can Venmo, you can cash up. There's ways that you can go on to myfaith.tv and put a seed in the ground. Pastor wow. Tracy. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for you right now. We are. We're all joining our faith. I say, by the Spirit within me. Yes. According to the parable of the sower, who when the sower sows the word, yes. Satan comes immediately to take away the seed. I say, you've been being fought over some things, and what you didn't know the devil was fighting you over was getting this seed in the ground. So I bind and break the power of the enemy that would come at you, your finances, your mind, or your situation that would keep you from getting this seed in the ground because what you're holding in your hand is your future. Yes. So in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, yes. those of you that are operating in the spirit of faith, to attach corresponding action in a seed. This is your faith. Faith is the seed you're sowing, and the money is your corresponding action. Yes. So in the name of Jesus, yes. over that financial seed and over your faith seed, what you're believing for, go! To every sower right now. Jesus. An accelerated 100-fold maximum yield breakthrough, break out harvest Hallelujah. that yes. they will never recover from, a harvest that will catapult them into their destiny and into the glory and into the meeting. Create their vehicle, Lord, to get to this meeting, but not just a meeting, to get into what this meeting will impart to their lives, their destiny. I thank you for it. We believe we receive it for every sower, and we will not come out of agreement for miracles, signs, and wonders in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Pastor Tracy. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Let me set this down. Praise the Lord. I want us to go straight to the yeah, communion. Yeah. You get that seed in the ground right now, even if we go off air. You put that seed in the ground. Just put the words caught. Something's, something's happening tonight. We're going to seal it now. It's about protesting. With the body of Jesus Christ and His blood. We're going to seal that seed because of this covenant meal. He was the ultimate seed. Yeah. The Lord really came on us on the very first day of the broadcast of this week talking about that, this extravagant offering. That's right. This is an extravagant offering. We receive it. Yeah. And it brings life. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Just wherever you are right now, I know, I know maybe you're typing away, maybe you're giving online. That's okay, but I want you to get the bread and the cup out right now. Because I want this to seal what you're doing as you're putting that covenant into the ground of that offering to believe God for your breakthrough and what you're trusting Him for. Father, I pray right now that this covenant that took place over 2,000 years ago that we can ask anything in your name and it will be Jesus. 
would you do it? Thank you, Father. Would you do it for every single one of our partners? Thank Father, both Pastor Tracy and myself, as we lead this network Thank all you. over the world as we do what you've called us to, yes. so Father, would you, would you bless yes. every one of our partners? Thank, Thank you, Father. Everyone that puts that seed in the ground tonight, Father, and everyone that has in the past, and everyone that's still going to, Lord Jesus, the covenant of blessing, I pray over every single partner now, every, everything in their home, everything in their family, Lord, everything in their business, Jesus, bless every partner. Because of this, we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Let's partake. The cup, the cup of blessing for you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands wherever you are right now. We've obeyed. I know there's things you've got to do online, but in your heart you've already determined to do them because as we go off air, you're going to put that seed in the ground at myfaith.tv, but also what you're going to do is you're going to register. And tonight, thousands of you are going to register. I believe it. 114 days away for you to believe God for that driver's license, for you to believe God for that plane ticket, for you to believe God for that hotel, for you to believe God. All the information is on the registration site. And when you register, we'll send you out emails with all the details. Everything's right there. But I want to speak the blessing of God over you. Hallelujah. I want to ask my son Christian, come here quickly, boy. Yep. I had that in my spirit. Yeah, and, and he'll be very upset with me that I'm asking him, but come here quickly, son. I want you to come stand here because you're about to enter another phase. Today is the last day that he's with us on this percent between us. We're so proud of you. Today, he leaves out tomorrow to enter what God has for him. For those of you who don't know, he's going back to South Africa. He said, Dad, I've got to be in the dome. He says, I've got to be there with Pastor Nile. I've got to serve that vision. And I said, boy, there's no better place. I'd rather have you. And in that vision for these next few months, he says, I'm going to go and prepare and get ready for Revival 10, Dad, for you and Pastor Tracy. And he's going to prepare his heart and he's going to be dealing with a whole lot of stuff over there. And I just want us to pray for him because it's going to be a next season change for him. So would you pray, Pastor Tracy? Hallelujah. This was not meant to be made public. Mm. Christian, you know that. We did it privately, but the mighty miracle of working anointing is in manifestation in my right hand. And I yeah. see myself laying it on your belly. Your father and I are going to agree based upon what the word of the Lord said. You gave me, the Lord gave me four words. I gave you some scriptures, talked to you briefly, but these four words he said to me when I got up this morning, tell Christian, he is sealed yes. for the assignment. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Father, we said all this mm. now Jesus I see now why you're doing it publicly Lord mm. because he's a gift yes to wherever this network goes yes he'll also be one that'll reproduce revelation yes we'll reproduce the vehicle mm. that will carry the voice to the ends of the earth mm. I say over you Christian now based upon the book of Romans chapter 10 it says, have they not heard? Have they not all seen? Yes. He said, yea, verily, their voice 
went to the ends of the earth. Yes. And I will make myself known to those that have not asked for me. I will manifest myself to those that have not searched for me. So you will go. The dust of many nations will cover your shoes. Yes. And yes. you will see your way into this very fullness we are preaching. For at before the return of the Lord, yes. you shall walk in some things that others have only dreamed to see, for your eyes will behold them. So stretch forth your hands, son, yes. to sighing, dying, crying humanity, for I have set you forth as a sharpened spear, like an archer arrow that hits the mark and speaks with the enemies in the gate. And except the Lord keep the house, they labor in vain that build it, except the watchman Except the Lord keeps the city, the watchman wakes, but in vain. Yes, and I will preserve yes. your coming in. I will preserve yes. your going out. Thank My you, faithfulness Lord. reaches to the clouds. I'm a very present help in time of need. You shall never, you shall never, you shall never be alone. For I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And my mighty angels shall go with you yes, and many times yes. minister to you and they will strengthen you. And even in impossible situations, you will be rescued, provided for, delivered and helped. And you shall have the same glorious stories as their fathers before you. Hallelujah. And you shall surely see this covenant also goes to work for thee. Hallelujah. In the name Thank of you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. What a day. Thank you, Jesus. Sealed. Yeah. For the assignment. Thank you, Lord. Brother Andre. Hallelujah. No evil things shall be born. <laughs> no fear shall come upon him. No weapon formed against him shall prosper. And no destruction will come near his dwelling. In Jesus', Jesus name. name. Hallelujah. <laughs> we set you apart, boy. Hallelujah. From behind. Ooh. To in front. That's what has happened today. Today, all the years you've served mom and I behind, Glory. we set you in front. Speak the oracles of God. Amen. Speak the words in the great faith dome and be used in a mighty way around the nations of the world. Step into it. It's yours. In Jesus' name mighty name. Hallelujah. Let's just lift our hands wherever you are right now. We love you. I know it's been a different program, but it's been an important one. And tonight, we want to say thank you for being with us. Things are shifting. You don't want to miss what God's going to do. We'll be back with you next week. It's going to be another great time. Tomorrow night from South Africa, Friday night the next. We'll be back next Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, right from Faith Studios, Naples. Shalom. We love you. God bless you. Hallelujah.